This is the Self Storage Podcast, where we share the knowledge and skills from the industry's leading investors, developers, and operators to help you launch and grow your self storage business. I'm your host, Scott Myers, and over the past 16 years, we have acquired, developed, converted, and syndicated over 2 million square feet of self storage nationwide with the help of my incredible team at selfstorageinvesting.com, who has helped thousands of people achieve greatness in self storage. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Self Storage Podcast. I am your host, Scott Myers, and this week's guest is John Humphrey. John is a seasoned entrepreneur. He's an author and is best known as the revenue generation expert, which is why we have him on this call. His superpower is in implementing systems to generate ongoing income in his own companies and for his clients worldwide. Now, his entrepreneurial journey began back in 2002 when he left New York in his high-paying consultant career in the pharma industry to move west to San Diego, where he and his wife, Michelle, launched their first business, the Effortless Living Institute. Since then, they have built and sold multiple companies in healthcare, coaching, infinite banking, luxury short-term vacation rentals, and the IoT Helium Network. He's a best-selling author of three books and speaks on stages worldwide. And today, I asked him to share some new ways to profit with real estate on the blockchain. So with that, John, welcome to the show. Scott, thanks so much for having me. Great to be here. Now, we've been looking forward to this, uh, John, because uh, what you have to share, as we talked about uh, off camera, is something that we've been wanting to take a deeper dive into uh, for a while now. And uh, lo and behold, we find that you are the man to share that. So if you would, I've, I've given folks, obviously, a little bit about your background. But if you would, you know, why don't you take a deeper dive, fill in the gaps, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about where you are today. Sure, sure. I'll, you know, I'll take it back a little bit, even back to the pandemic. You know, I've been, I've been an entrepreneur since right around 2000. I left New York, you know, came out west with my wife. We want to take a stab at being entrepreneurs and living out where it was no longer snowing, which was, you know, right after 9-11 is when we left. You know, we were living outside the city. That's where I originally grew up. And then once 9-11 happened, you know, everything really changed in Manhattan. And we were like, hey, let's start brand new. Let's go off west where no, none of my family was. We just kind of got in a car on April Fool's Day 2002 <laughs> and we drove west and we ended up in San Diego and we love it here. We've been here ever since. Um, we started many businesses, you know, we've made millions of dollars. I'll also tell everybody I've been bankrupt. I've been audited. I've gone through all the things that an entrepreneur is going to go through up and down over the course of years and survived and lick, licked our wounds. And, you know, now we're thriving again. And one of the industries that we really were excited about was actually short-term rentals. And that happened about three, four years ago. My partner and I, Jerry Conti, we started a training company. We acquired 24 luxury properties in Phoenix. And we wanted to really play into that kind of that hospitality game of, of really nice homes, you know, seven, eight, nine bedroom homes that you would go with a group of friends, have a good time. And, and that was cranking along. And I'm going to share this little backstory because it's important of how we're now here with the Helium IoT Network, how we actually got involved in that. It was right around COVID when COVID started two years ago, right? And right around, you know, it kind of got hairy around March of of 2020. And I know it was March. It was because it was my the week of my wife's birthday. <laughs> I'll never forget. We had a big party planned that I'm sure you, you know you had plans going on in March. And all of a sudden, you started hearing things were shutting down. And we were invited to go to this big conference called the Enlightened Conference. And all of a sudden, it, that got shut down. And I said, anytime now, they're going to call from my son's school, and that's going to be shut down. And all of a sudden, everything was shut down. Well, in addition to everything being shut down, what most people don't realize is that we knew that travel was coming to a halt. People were kind of scared they weren't going anywhere. Well, that was great if you stayed home, but if you had a vacation rental, this was really awful news. This was really, really awful news. And Jerry and I had 24 properties that we were controlling at the time. And here's what happened. What happened was in the whole month of April, Airbnb, which was like the biggest OTA, online travel agency in the world, they came out and they told all the travelers, hey, if you want to stop traveling, if you want to cancel your booking, go ahead and don't worry about it. We'll give you a 100% full refund. So what they did was is that they actually superseded the existing cancellation policy that everybody signed off on, the host and the traveler. Now, that was great if you were the traveler because, hey, you got to get your money back. No problem. You didn't know what was going to happen. But as the host, we all got stuck holding the bag. And so Jerry and I lost $600,000 in revenue in 30 days. Just gone. You know, everybody just canceled and there was no recourse. And I tell you this for a reason because it kind of scared us in the in that industry saying at any given time 
a big tech company could come in and just shut you off or change the rules or do something. And if you're relying your business on that piece of software, then, you know, this is a, this is like rolling the dice. So Jerry, you know, my partner got up and said, Hey, listen, this is a wake up call for us because this could happen again. And that's when we started our company called Boomster, which was Boom STR for short term rental. And we started to come up with ways of how people could direct book their properties. And we wanted to bring technology and all sorts of things. And so we wanted to help people to actually become a little bit more autonomous with their luxury properties and not be so reliant on what was going on. So full circle, you know, a couple of years goes by, we're doing this and all of a sudden we're always in the market for technology, things that we can add onto our homes that can make us more money that doesn't cost a whole lot of time. And that's when this whole thing got introduced to us called the Helium IoT network. And, you know, to be honest, I'm not a real techie guy. I'm, you know, I don't really know all the mechanics. I'm not the guy in the lab, but I'm, I'm in business development. I love things that are, that are going to make me more money that are not going to cost me a whole lot of time. So we investigated this thing called IoT, which I didn't even know what it stood for. So people are like, oh, you know, there's this thing that you can add onto your house and it's going to make you money. It's actually going to reward you in cryptocurrency. I said, well, what is IoT? And they said, well, IoT is what's called the Internet of Things. And I had I had never heard of that. Have you, had, Scott, had you had heard of, like a couple of years ago, have you ever heard of IoT before? Uh, you know, I had uh, heard it, uh, but then, um, you know, embarrassingly enough, as uh, we're preparing for this uh, interview, uh, John, I looked at that and I was like, uh, uh, is that a typo or is that uh, the LOT? So as you reminded me, and so, uh, no, it's still not mainstream uh, yet, but it's beginning to creep into our everyday vernacular now. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and this is what was happening. I didn't know what it was. So the Internet of Things is basically another form of a network that's out there. It's like a local network where little devices that need to be hooked up to the internet, they don't have access through the Wi-Fi, they don't have access through cellular, and they don't have access to satellite. So how do they connect? Well, they create a local network called an IoT network, and it's, it's done off of a radio signal, a 915 megahertz signal that goes out. It's very inexpensive. It goes very far reaching. It's actually a signal that they used 50 years ago with a product called the Lowrance in boating. It was before even GPS came out. This is how people learned how to chart their waters was through this device. And so now they brought this signal back and I said, well, what are IoT devices? And so I started to look into it. IoT devices that we use all the time are like when you go downtown and you put your uh, credit card in a parking meter. That is an IoT device, meaning the parking meter is not on a Wi-Fi network and it's not going off to cellular. It's your credit card information is getting beamed over local network. The one most common everybody knows now are the scooters, the little electric scooters that you can rent, like the Lime scooters, the Bird scooters. Those are all IoT devices, meaning there's a local network outside that all of these little scooters can be found, can be tracked. This is how it happens. I said, okay, well, what does that have to do with me? Well, what I didn't know was now there's a cryptocurrency out there called Helium. And Helium said, okay, listen, we're going to do something that nobody's ever done before. Instead of creating a local IoT network, we're going to create the first decentralized global IoT network, meaning not local to a town or a city or a municipality. It's going to be actually global. And I said, wow, that's really interesting. So again, what does that have to do with me? They said, well, there are going to be 85 billion, with a B, 85 billion brand new devices that are going to be coming out that are going to be consumer devices, things that we're going to be using. It was mostly for commercial. Now it's going to be consumer devices. And they're going to be coming out and they're going to need a network to go on. So we're going to empower people. And they call it the people's network. We're going to allow the people to go out and create the network. And I kind of look at it this way. So when we had our short-term vacation rental homes, and it was and this was approached to us, we were told that we can add a device to our property and we just could add it on there. And I'm gonna show everybody in a minute what the device that actually we developed, but you could actually add a device to your property. And this device is going to network with everybody else that has the same similar device. And before you know it, box by box, house by house, business by business. This is what's going to create this network that we can all participate in. 
I said, wow, it's a pretty big undertaking. So we actually investigated it and we looked into it and he said, well, this is really something going on. There was about, I think, 200,000 helium hotspots. They're called hotspots. They're out there in the world. They're all networking. It's, it's in like, um, it's in multiple countries. It's all over Europe. It's all over the U.S. Is that interesting? So we investigated. And when we investigated it, we said, well, the devices that are out there right now, where you just basically, what you would do is you'd buy this device. You, most people would just take it home. They put it on their coffee table. They plug it into their Wi-Fi router. And then you're supposed to get rewarded cryptocurrency, meaning Helium is going to reward you for your box being on the network and sending signals and receiving signals from other boxes in the area. So you said, wow, this is completely passive, fantastic, we love it. And when we started to get dig down the rabbit hole a little bit, we found out, Scott, that people were plugging in their devices, but they weren't re getting any rewards. Like they weren't getting the rewards that they thought they were going to be getting. So Jerry and I put our heads together. And one thing that I always love to do is I love to always build a better mousetrap. I always want to look at what's going on and say, what could be improved? What could be done? So we actually hired a guy that retired from Motorola, this guy that was in, in networking for years. And we said, listen, here is this little device. And the little device was basically, basically the size of a cell phone. We said, rip this thing apart and redesign us a box that's actually going to reward crypt, like the cryptocurrency that we think that the boxes should be rewarding. How do we do that? So we hired this guy. We went into R&D and then we actually developed this box. I'm going to show you what this box looks like because this is pretty cool. So you can see this is not very big. It's a utility box. And this utility box, what we did is we took the guts out. And, and what we did was we put a circuit board in there. We put a modem. We put all sorts of good stuff. And this does not go in your house. This goes on the side of your house. Now, why do I share this with you? Well, once we started doing this for our homes, we actually created a business People were calling us and saying, hey, can you put this on my business? Can you put this on my storage facility? Can, can you put this on my commercial property? Can you put this on my multifamily home, my apartment, my condo? Any place that had an internet access, you can put a helium hotspot. And what we also did was we took this box and we said, great, it's not all in the box. We actually put an, inter an external antenna that goes on the roof of your property or your building. And this thing's gonna go out and it's gonna do two things only. It's gonna send out a signal, to other boxes and it's going to receive a signal and every time it does that helium is going to reward you cryptocurrency so this became like a whole nother animal before you know it we're in this for nine months you know we created a multi-million dollar business we're doing installs all over the united states we have a we have a you know a development team we actually put these things together right here in california in our offices we have an installation department. We have customer service. We have sales that we developed. I mean, we, this became a major operation just out of like almost by accident, this all happened. And the coolest part about it is right now there are about 900,000 helium hotspots in the world. And there's about 200,000 right here in the United States. Now, why do I share that number with everybody? Is because it's going to take about 3 million helium hotspots to cover the entire United States. And so we're about 15 to 18% into the build, into the complete build out in the US. So most of the United States is completely wide open and it's ripe for the picking. So what we've been doing is we've been reaching out to everyone and everybody kind of knows what we're doing now. And we analyze properties and business locations all day long here at our company. And we analyze whether or not their, you know, their business would actually be a good host to have a helium hotspot. And then once it's installed, you start earning. I mean, the, the tokens start getting put into your cryptocurrency wallet in the form of their token called HNT. And that's really what people are doing. So this is like kind of a long-term passive play that people are, are starting to engage in. And most people don't even know what the IoT network is. Like you were saying, like, hey, you, you may have heard of it. But in about three years, this is going to be as common as Google because everything around us is gonna change. I mean, this is the crazy thing, is that imagine you're using your cell phone, right? Imagine using your cell phone and instead of your signal going off cell towers, 110,000 cell towers that are out there doing what they're doing, imagine your phone conversation going through a couple of hundred thousand hotspots in the blink of an eye, and that's how you're gonna be communicating. Everything with your car, everything with your home, 
everything outside your home, there will be lots of little tiny devices that are going to be monitoring all aspects of our lives. And this is the new connectivity that's happening. So I share this like kind of a little background with you of, of kind of what we're doing, because it's kind of really fascinating what's happening. You know, technology is moving so fast now. And one of the things that I, I wanted to share, which was very, very unique, was that when we, you know, when we were putting this all together, it was kind of like, well, people were trying to understand, well, you know, how does it work? Do I have to do anything to the box? Do I have to we said, no, this is a 100% hands-free operation. The box is going to do what it's supposed to do. Similar, similar. I look at it this way, Scott. I look at it as if Netflix was going to get started today, would they go completely online with everything through the network? They probably would send you a Netflix box and they would say, great, put this box in your house. And here's what we're going to do. When we go live with entertainment, when your neighbor orders a movie, and the signal's got to go through your box to get to their box, we're going to reward you for that. And that is exactly what kind of the Helium IoT network's really doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, yeah. John. So that, that raises a lot of questions. And uh, yeah. and I'm going to ask and anticipate from Storage Nation some of the questions that they, they will ask. So let's start with in self-storage, as you're aware, with uh, you know other commercial asset classes, uh, you know our valuations of our, our facilities, our business is based upon net operating income. So how much money do we bring in on an annual basis? What are our expenses? Here's our net. And one of the beauties of self-storage is that because it's such, such a versatile asset class that you know we can add uh, multiple you know revenue streams you know we can sell locks boxes and moving supplies set up a little retail center we can uh, you know rent u-haul trucks um or you know the budget or the uh, any of the others and, and create an agency and that revenue comes into the facility and a multitude of others you know the 30 plus different uh, you know ancillary income streams that we can add and i view this as another one of those and so when then when we when you calculate it, your NOI, we're going to if we're going to sell or refinance, that's all factored into the equation and the valuation. So if we're generating X more amount of revenue per year by an ancillary income stream, then, then the value for the facility goes up by X if you're going to sell it with that in place. So let's talk about that. What does that look like, John, if I'm going to install a helium box on average, you know, in, a, in just let's say an average location or maybe even a below average location, you know, what can I expect in terms of annual revenues, either from, you know, just having it as part of the network or even from maybe some of the neighbors using it, like you had mentioned, what's an average? And then part two to that question is then typically when a commercial asset sells, or if you were to sell one of your Airbnbs, would you keep the box in place and, and advertise your Airbnb, you know, with that as an additional revenue stream as well? So, what does that look like? I'll answer the first question. So people say, well, you know, um, what what kind of revenue can I get from the box or how many boxes if mm -hmm. I buy a storage facility? And we do have actually uh, one of my best friends, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Odd, who actually lives here in, in uh, San Diego. She She's in this game. She's in the game that you're in. Like she has a whole bunch of self-storage units. So when she was inquiring about this, she's like, well, if I have a, you know, a big self-storage facility, do I have multiple mm -hmm. boxes or do I have mm -hmm. one? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that you're going to have one per structure. The helium mm -hmm. hotspot works ideally if the hotspot is a thousand feet from another hotspot. So, you know, putting them all in an apartment building or something is, is a big no-no. So you'd have like one per apartment building, you'd have one per storage uh, facility. This would go on, you know, side of your storage facility. And then we would put about a 14 foot, it's just a, a single stick antenna. It's like a digital antenna that goes up there. The higher, the better. So we've actually had you know, a lot of our clients that have self storage facilities, what's great is that they're kind of in more remote places where there's not a lot of restrictions on what you can do. And we've actually had people put like, you know, 40, 50 foot digital antennas on top of their facility there because height is everything for us. The higher your antenna goes, the more boxes are going to be able to communicate with your box. It's kind of that's the way it is. That, that's the one probably downside of the signal. It's, it's a, it works on direct line of sight. So it's different than Wi-Fi and all cellular that goes through walls and things like that. If this is covered with trees, if this is like a mountainous range area, the signal doesn't go anywhere. It has to, so height is everything. So the higher the antenna, the better. So on average, to, ask, to answer your question, so once this is on here, on average, you're looking to acquire about five tokens a month. And that is what each and every one of the boxes we design it to do an average of five. Now it could be a little less, could be a little more. It all depends on your location, height of your antenna. Like there's a whole bunch of things. That's why we analyze every location before we actually move forward. 
because some locations are just not good at all. So we like to cherry pick the best ones. If you have a great location, you can look on average about five tokens a month, which is 60 tokens a year. And this is more of a long-term play because I get this question all the time. Is this a cash on cash return? And it really isn't because you know, you're dealing with cryptocurrency, you know what's, <laughs> if you're living, unless you're not living on this planet, you know what's happened to cryptocurrency as, as of late, you know, it, it is really taking a hit. Now it's going to make a comeback, but it can go up and down. It's like stock, right? So it can go up and down uh, based on momentum. So with five tokens, 60 a, a month, 60 a year, over five years, let's say it, you've acquired 300 tokens per box. Now they are saying that the industry analysts are saying that by 2027, Helium should be, be anywhere from $250 to $350 per token. Now, that doesn't seem like a whole lot compared to what like Bitcoin does, you know, being upwards of $60,000. Now I know it's under $20,000 now and it's gone up and down, but even $300 a token and you had 300 tokens, that's $90,000 that you can pull out in year five on a single box on your property. So mm -hmm. that's a that's that's pretty good, you know. That's really good. And so now that number is going to go up, also because that number is based on you participating in the network. That's phase number one. Phase number two, Scott, is going to be when the network is built. The data that goes through the network, the more data that goes through your box, because more people are using their IoT devices around your neighborhood, or it's passing through your box to get to where it's got to go you're going to earn even more. And that's phase two of the earnings that's going to happen from Helium. Mm -hmm. now, to, to, now, to answer your other question, like, okay, let's say, hey, that's really great, but let's say I sell this business. What do I do with the box? Now, you have two options. It's really simple. The box, when you come on board and you actually like to have a box and we analyze your location, we place a box there, the box is actually going to be paired directly to your crypto wallet, meaning it's always your box wherever it goes. Mm -hmm. So you can either work out a deal with the owner that buys your storage facility, where maybe you want to share in the crypto, maybe you want, to, mm -hmm. you want to add him to your crypto wallet and share something, or simply you can pull the box and we can relocate your hotspot to your next business or your next house or whatever it is that you want. So it's very actually very, very simple to remove, uninstall and install someplace else. Mm -hmm. So just looking at some numbers, uh, folks, yeah. um, and, and for those of you that are uh, already doing uh, the math uh, uh, while John's talking as well, uh, depending on when you listen to this uh, podcast and uh, where the price of, uh, of helium is, is really going to determine what this looks like. So uh, you know, if you're getting 60 tokens uh, a year, and as uh, John mentioned, uh, it's it's a little less than this right now, but if it's expected to go up to somewhere around uh, $200 to $300 a token, I mean, even at, at $100 a token, and let's say that you've acquired 60, so I'm just doing the math in, in real time here, 60 tokens times $100 value in uh, each, we're at $6,000 and you divide that by, let's be conservative, a cap rate of seven. So divide by 0.07, you know, that's if you were to, if this continues on, you were to leave that box there, or even if you want to take your box with you, as John mentioned, then you, you set the new client up with another box and still, or at least show them how you would still then say, here's what this will generate here at your, your site. And that, that's a, a, the equivalent of a $85,714 in value on your site added to the NOI, the bottom line. So Let's talk next, um, and, and uh, unless you're getting to this, John, uh, you know, in terms of the nuts and bolts, I mean, do you just say, raise your hand and say, John, I want a box, come install it. What's the cost involved uh, for the investment? So show us what the ROI looks like. Yeah, real, real simple. It's, it's really simple. We have actually two paths for every individual. We have what's called a premier partner, where mm -hmm. it's $29.97. It's about $3,000 for your box, it includes your equipment, shipping, install, maintenance, everything. So it's a one-time mm -hmm. thing. That's how we mm -hmm. work it. At mm -hmm. And what we do is we become a partner. <laughs> we will share in the tokens with you. You get 50%, our company gets 50%. Mm -hmm. And that gets paid out really for the next 47 years. So this is a 47 mm -hmm. year play that Helium has agreed to pay on the network. Now, that being said, that five tokens is to you. So it's not you're splitting mm -hmm. the five tokens with us. Right. So yep. We split, you're looking mm -hmm. at your end would be five tokens. Mm -hmm. Now, that's if you wanted to you know, become what's called a premier partner. If you want to become mm -hmm. what we call the host partner, meaning like, hey, I'm raising my hand. I have a great location. Analyze it. I don't want to invest my $3,000, but I'm going to invest something smaller 
we have a one-time investment of $495 and you will then mm -hmm. get 15% of the tokens. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's a lot less for you up front. You got a lot less tokens, but there's obviously a lot less you know, money for you. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And and there's no other real fees that are associated. We don't do a, a yearly maintenance fee. We don't do any of these things. We make it really, really simple. And one of the big reasons why we put this model together, really, Scott, is because as we saw amateurs coming into the marketplace that were buying helium hotspots, and I will, I'm going to tell everybody up front, you can go on to eBay, you can go off somewhere, you can buy helium hotspots, they're for sale. You can get them as low as probably $300, $400. The problem is, is that when you plug that in and it works for a while, but then it doesn't work anymore, who are you gonna call? Uh, yeah. You know, this is like, we're getting all these calls now from people going, hey, I bought these hotspots, they don't yeah. work. Mm -hmm. I don't have anybody to call. Like, so well, when we put our mm -hmm. partnership program together, we wanted it to be that way because we wanted to be vested into your success because we wanted to share mm -hmm. in it. That mm -hmm. means that we have to make sure your hotspot's doing what it's supposed to do or else it's a waste of money for us. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put a partnership program together. So it's real simple. Mm -hmm. So when somebody raises their hand and says, you know, so before anybody buys anything, before anybody even comes on board and we even have that conversation, what we always like to do is do an analysis of mm -hmm. their property. So if you have, if, you're, if your clients have storage facilities all over the United States or even mm -hmm. other parts of the world, it's a real, real simple. They could just, you know, I'll, I'll give everybody my, my calendar link. It's very, very simple. Uh, it's IOT John. So Internet of Things John, IOTJohn.com. And you can actually get on my calendar and you could submit on my calendar. You could submit your addresses and my staff will do an analysis of your property at no charge. Mm -hmm. Just to see if there's even something there. And then we could always schedule to talk some options about installation. Once your property is approved, install up and running in 10 days. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're moving pretty quick. So John, for the folks out there, as you mentioned, you know, crypto, like the stock market, all markets, you know, there's a fluctuation in prices. And so you're paid out in tokens, you, you know, you're for those that aren't familiar, maybe still and in, in how crypto works, um, there's, a, there's the token piece, which um, can be, you know, utilized as a, as a like a currency, and then there's the, the investment side of it. And so I imagine many of these folks until they cash out are looking at it as in the investment side. So what are the some of the considerations as it fluctuates? And as it goes up and down as a, you know, the price of tokens go up and down? I mean, outside of the obvious if you decide to sell out of those uh, tokens at this po at some point or if you happen to get caught out when you're advertising in my example you know a minute ago which is you know here's here's how much it's bringing in uh, right now on average so this is a uh, you know the valuation that you can expect to see going forward what what are some of the considerations that need to be taken with a fluctuation of tokens in general or of uh, helium and then you know how easy would it be to exit once you say if you do sell the facility with your and decide to leave that box in place yeah, great, great question. I mean, the nice thing is, is that, you know, the crypto is becoming so mainstream that there's mm -hmm. all these different services and wallet services. So <laughs> what will happen is every every month. So when you get started and your hotspot is up and you'll sign up for a free crypto wallet. If you don't know anything mm -hmm. about crypto, that's fine. You have to know zero about cryptocurrency to participate. I know a lot of people are afraid of I've never been in it. What do I have to do? It's It's real simple. It's an app on your phone and you'll give us the address. There's like a little barcode. Mm -hmm teach you how to yep. do it. And then every month we will deposit the tokens, whatever the box earned, we'll deposit it into your crypto wallet. And then if you wanted to then exchange that for the crypto currency, maybe you want to exchange it for something else, or maybe you just want to exchange it for dollars. Mm -hmm. You would just like click a button and money will be direct mm -hmm. deposited into your bank mm -hmm. account of your choice. Mm -hmm. It's a real, like, it's real seamless. It's really, it's funny. I had to learn this too when I was getting started in this. I thought everything was on the computer. They're like, no, it's on your phone. They don't even do mm -hmm. it on the computer. It's yep. all an app on your phone. And so that that's what's real simple. And I, I would just share with everybody that this is more of a long-term play. Sure. I always, mm -hmm. I always share that with people because, you know, uh, the price of helium has been as high as $60. It's been as low as $10. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and that's the whole market has gone up and down. I would say be in it for the long haul. And, and I would say the one thing to consider, which is why we actually jumped into this, is that this is the only cryptocurrency play that I know of currently that has the, the, the cryptocurrency is actually tying itself to actually a hard asset. You know, it's very rare that you kind of hear that because most cryptocurrency is based on momentum. And this is actually based on a hard asset. So this IoT network, I will say, is getting built 
whether we participate or not. So we, you know, here at Linkster, one thing that we're considering is that, you know, the goal of our company, Linkster, is to place 20,000 hotspots out in the world in the next three years. That'll be about a $500 million company when we have 20,000 of these out. Now, that's still a drop in the ocean out of 3 million that are just going to be in the United States alone. And so I kind of look at this. When I was look, when we were looking at this opportunity, and I'm I'm going to date myself. I'm in my fifties, but most people that are younger don't realize that there was a time when there was no cable television. Like you didn't have cable television. You had like mm-hmm. you were like eight channels on a on a mm-hmm. dial that had a turn. That's how I grew up. Mm-hmm. But I remember when cable vision in New York came to my neighborhood. It just mm-hmm. came to my neighborhood. They, that was a big announcement. Everybody went wild when cable vision mm-hmm. was coming. And look how it's become mainstream today. And I look mm-hmm. at the IoT network, it's going to be like a cable vision moment. Mm-hmm. This is what's going to happen. Like nobody knows about it now, but mm-hmm. sooner or later, it's going to be, oh, you remember when IoT first came out? Like my mm-hmm. son, who's 11, he, he's going to know when IoT came out. And he's by the time he's probably in college, he's not going to know a world where it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And, and so I look at this as one of these ones, I hate to say it, it to be cliche, but this is a, a disruptor in what's going on with the world of networks, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. so whether we put our 20,000 out or not, 3 million of these are going to be placed. We just want to make sure that we're securing our place in the digital railroad. So mm-hmm. that's what we would tell people. If, if you got a location and it's making you money, it doesn't hurt you at all to add your place in, in the railroad mm-hmm. right now. So when it really gets moving, you're going to be like, Wow, thank God I got my place because by getting my place, I pushed out somebody else that was looking at the same location. Mm-hmm. And that's really what this is all coming down to. So, John, I'll ask another uh, two parter yeah. here. So, you said on average, you know, roughly five tokens um, per month is what you're looking at. But obviously, the price of healing goes up and down. And so, is that set in terms of a contract? Because if I'm getting say five tokens a month and helium is only at you know ten dollars versus five tokens a month and it's at a hundred or two hundred i mean that's dramatically different no matter how you slice it whether you cash out or not so does that fluctuate do you sign an agreement for a short amount of time or you know do the amount of tokens that you get in the beginning is that dependent on when you sign up and where the price of helium is tell us about the the pricing and is it dynamic in nature does it change it changes yeah that's the beauty of it so right now like helium's at ten dollars Right. Mm-hmm. So the token that you get today is a ten dollar token, but that token can be worth a thousand dollars if the price of helium goes up to a thousand dollars. That's a thousand dollar token. Mm-hmm. So it's unlike buying stock where you mm-hmm. buy it at a certain price or you yeah. option at a certain price and it's stuck as a certain price. This is going to fluctuate up and down. So that's why we're saying right now the entire play mm-hmm. is acquiring tokens. That's mm-hmm. it. And then the value mm-hmm. of the token is going to be what you choose. You want to like kind of what your squeak point is. Mm-hmm. Like when do you want to like cash out? It's like, it's like, hey, what, what's that magic number? Everybody has a magic number. Like my magic number is a thousand dollars. You know, mm-hmm. so I don't want to jump out before it's a thousand dollars. By mm-hmm. that time, I want to have you know half a million tokens sitting around. That's going to be a big payday. Everybody's different. So that's the great thing about it is. Acquire the tokens. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what the price of the token is. The token is going to be the value of what the value is of mm-hmm. that. Day. So there is a little bit of a risk in this, and that it, you know, if you're buying in when helium was at sixty, and then you can do the ROI to say this is what's going to cost for the box, the prices you just mentioned, and you say, well, if I exchange it now or in the future, you know, here's roughly what I'm going to get versus now where it's at ten. Now, as you mentioned. It is a long-term play. Then you need to make sure that the, you know you stick around long enough for the gain to come in to, in order to get that ROI. Is that correct? Correct, correct. I look at this whole opportunity as uh, there was a there was a great infomercial guy years ago when I grew up. His name was Ron Popeil. <laughs> and do you remember Ron Popeil? Oh, guys? I yeah, grew up on Ron as well. You and I are already. Uh, you know, you know he, he was like <laughs> the infomercial king, and he mm-hmm. had this one product called the rotisserie oven. I'll never forget mm-hmm. it because my mother-in-law mm-hmm. had it. And every time we went over, she would just talk about this rotisserie oven. And mm-hmm. I remember her making this chicken, right? Yep. And she put it in there and she closed the lid and she clicked the button and she said mm-hmm. the magic line. She goes, you said it and forget it. Forget you know, it. Mm-hmm. Like one of the magic lines, right? So at Linkster, we tell people like, this is going to be one of these things where it's very minimal. It costs no time. There's nothing you're going to have to do to it. You're just going to get it set up. And you're Mm -hmm. just going to let it run its thing because it is not an active thing that you can do to make it make more Mm -hmm. 
cryptocurrency for you. It can't do anything more than it's going to do. It's mm-hmm. a true utility, kind of like an electricity box on the side of your house. You know it's doing what it's doing, but you're not involved in it. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is what this is really about. So mm-hmm. it's going to be like, to me, for a lot of our clients, they're going to set this. We're going to do all the monitoring for them. And before you know it, a few years goes by, they're going to look at their Helium wallet and go, wow, mm-hmm. I've got you know, 200, 300, 400 tokens in here. And Helium is like, they're going to know what Helium is doing because we're going to be educating mm-hmm. them over the years and keeping mm-hmm. them up to date and doing all the research so they don't have to do all that stuff. Yep. We're going to... We're going to be on on the forefront of educating all of the all of our partners mm-hmm. in that. But I think it's going to be one of those deals mm-hmm. that you're just going to be like, wow. The only thing I wish is I wish I had ten more boxes. Like that's yeah. what everybody's yeah. going to say in the years mm-hmm. coming up. Boy, I really wish I had ten or a hundred of these things because wow, that could have been a big payday. So you get the benefit and and you see the bigger picture of scale. That's why you started your company based on that, all on that. How do you educate folks like myself and Storage Nation out here that has five facilities, 10 facilities? What does that look like? I mean, is it truly just a, you know, a a dreamer's play or, you know, it's just linear math? You know, what does scale look like for somebody who's got five, 10, you know, 50 properties all, all across the country and putting uh, boxes, if if it's you know accepted, if they're in good spots all across the country, what's the play for them? Yeah, and, and that's, that's a great question. So we have a, we not only do with, you know, people that have multiple storage facilities, but we also have, you know, property management companies that mm-hmm. they'll submit to us a thousand, you know, properties. That they mm-hmm. And are they gonna go out and spend $3,000 a property? No. What they're going to do is they're going to pay, and here's the cool thing how we put it together, they're going to pay a one-time fee of $500, mm-hmm. and we can literally put 200 boxes on there for a one-time fee of $500. That's becoming a host. So mm-hmm. for them, this is just extra income for them. So there really is not a risk. They're, mm-hmm. I mean, the biggest risk out of their pocket is $500, and that's nothing for a property management company of 1,000 locations. But out of the 1,000, there might be 200 that are great. So we'll actually take the risk and do all the outlay of putting in 200 hotspots out there because Mm -hmm. we're sharing in the revenue. So people that have multiple storage facilities, what we have found, if people have like five or 10, what they'll do is they may be a premier partner for two or three of the real Mm -hmm. top producers. Mm -hmm. You know, spend the nine grand on like three hotspots, like a three pack from Mm -hmm. us. But then the other five locations that are pretty good, but they don't want to spend the money, they'll just become hosts. Mm-hmm. And there's no additional fee to put um, hotspots in those other locations. So that's how most people are doing it. They're doing a bit of a hybrid, a few mm-hmm. premier boxes, and then most of them will be host boxes because this is mm-hmm. all just extra income for their already income generating property. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good. Good. All right, John. Well, I'm sure we could uh, delve into all the other questions <laughs> that uh, yeah. folks have about this. But uh, at the end of the day, it is pretty straightforward. I think we've covered 90% of it. Um, and then the rest can be answered by you and your partner. So if you would, how do folks get in touch with you and um, how do they get in touch with Linkster? Great. So uh, the simplest way is, you know, get on my calendar. Like I mentioned, it's IOT John. So like stands for Internet of Things, IOTjohn.com. That goes right on my calendar. I'd be happy to, you know, to have a 30 minute call with any of your listeners. Submit your property locations. We'll do a free analysis. We could discuss that on that call. If you mm-hmm. want to just get information about our company, it's linkster.com. That's L-I-N-X-S-T-R.com. So mm-hmm. linkster.com, that'll give you some information. We also have an informational webinar that you can see all about IoT. And by there also, uh, we can give you a free report called Show Me the Money. So this is all about mm-hmm. the IoT Helium network and what it's going to be doing over the years to come. So we actually put that white paper together for people that are interested to learn more of the details about how it works. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Well, John, you are a serial entrepreneur and not self-professed, uh, but learned a little bit about uh, the companies you've started, your background, and certainly in the blockchain space, which really involves a lot. You know, that, that's looking at the economy, that's looking at, in your instance, uh, real estate, as well as uh, the stock market. I mean, all things involved in the economy right now. So with that perspective, you know, what does the balance of 2022 uh, look like as we head into what what appears to be heading into the, the recession uh, with rising interest rates and inflation? You know, what what's the play that you're seeing in, in the overall picture? Yeah, I think what I'm seeing, I'm, I'm actually out here in San Diego, California. And so the biggest telltale sign I'm seeing is that we follow a lot of real estate out here. And I'm, I'm starting to mm-hmm. see 
more and more of the homes, like there's just nutty prices out here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, it's just gone bonkers this last year. But what I'm starting to see is I'm starting to see now for the very first time, I'm starting to see on Zillow, my alerts and things like that, that now mm -hmm. things are dropping or mm -hmm. properties mm -hmm. are more on, they're staying longer. People more are just kind of almost yeah. snapping out of this craze and they're going, whoa, 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 what am I doing here? So mm -hmm. what I see people doing is you see people holding on to their money a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think they're more concerned about that. We've got, you know, inflation problems. We've got gas problems. I mean, we're paying $7 a gallon out here in, mm -hmm. in California. So I, I think there's a crunch, but I also see that there's people are looking for something a little bit more innovative outside mm -hmm. the scope of the mainstream. I'm starting to see people like, okay, the things that I was doing over the last five, 10 years are not going to be the same things that are going to get me through this next winter yep. that's coming. Cause mm -hmm. I really believe the winter is probably mm -hmm. upon us if, with the economy yep. unless something really changes. Yep. Well, the thing uh, goes around our organization um, is that, um, yeah, just that, uh, what, what got us out of Egypt isn't going to get us to the promised land and we do need to pivot and uh, implement yeah. some different strategies. So all wise and sage advice. So um, John, I appreciate this so much. Uh, great being able to learn a little bit more about what you're doing and how this is, a, yet again, just another very simple, um, if I dare say, you know, bolt on to our existing self storage facilities that's going to generate a, additional wealth for us by by way of using the blockchain and the tokens that uh, helium is offering in exchange for that so congratulations great business model and um things are going well and i and, and i see nothing but a, a good future for you in it and uh well done you picked a winner thank you scott appreciate it thanks for having me all right john take care Hey gang, wait three things before you leave. First, don't forget to subscribe to the Self Storage Podcast and turn on your notifications so you never miss another episode. And while you're there, please leave us a five-star review if you like the show. Second, be sure to share your favorite episodes and more via Instagram and don't forget to tag us. And lastly, head to the links in the show description and hit the follow and subscribe button on Twitter and Facebook to get a front row seat as we grow and scale our business and bring you along with us. Take care.